My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS, took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. Everybody and welcome to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. This is your host for this kind of moment because I'm the one talking first, Melanie uh, Dean. <laughs> There's the other one. Here's Christian Basil. Hashtag on hungover. <laughs> <laughs> we have a third host who is now laughing as well, Mackenzie Floor, amazing author of Right of Wand series. Hey, Mackenzie. Hey. So if you haven't already kind of noticed the. Uh, Center of <laughs> voices. Um, this is going to be the most laid back, pseudo unprofessional, pseudo professional podcast ever because a lot of us were traveling this week. Some of us came back from Supercon. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, Christian, Christian, wake up. Um, so we're in the thick of con season and we already had a little bit of a hiatus last week and we figured, hey, we got to put something out there. People actually want to listen to us. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to have like a three way of hosting here between myself, Mackenzie and Christian. And we're just going to talk a little bit about cons in general, us going to cons, things that we love about cons, and especially all the Doctor Who cast and crew that show up at conventions. And we're going to talk a little bit about war stories and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, keeping with the unprofessionalism of this laid back thing that we call a podcast, uh, you'll notice a lot more sounds and everything. That's because everybody has decided just to open the doors and let the cats run around in their rooms as they're talking. So you're going to hear me. You're going to hear Mackenzie's fur babies running around. You might hear my idiots like right now trying to go into my desk. Um, and maybe uh, I'll Christian's... just open the door and have some stray cats walk in. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Christian will have that. Otherwise, his dogs will start rocking. Yeah, yeah one thing of hobnobs. Um, I kid you not. I have them right here. For those people who know that biscuits come in uh, little wrapped packages. So anyway, we're going to talk uh, cons and uh, whatnot. I don't think we really have any Who New News, do we? Kind of? Maybe? We do, but if you want to read Who New News, uh, just go to the Facebook page. <laughs> 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 we post a lot of stuff on the Facebook page. Hashtag um, lazy. Oh, I can't wait. I, I, I guess I better explain my condition here. I'm not. I'm not high or anything like that. I don't know. He's. I don't know. But quick, I'm quick pressed. footnote. Jay <laughs> is also off traveling along with the Hanging with Web Show crew. So we're actually recording this ourselves. So right now, uh, I, I eagerly wait later in the week when they hear this recording and see what we're up to. So anyway, Christian. What's what's going on with you, pal? Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, it will be the following Saturday. So last week, um, uh, we went to I went to SuperCon. I was uh, brought in as a backup panelist, which was nice, which meant I got to spend the four days over there and uh, took as many pictures as I humanly possibly could for the first time, and uh, it, it was very enjoyable. A lot of people. Um, and I'm not poking fun at, at my, at the, the convention itself, but uh, I do want to address this for 2020. A lot of my, uh, a lot of our fans and a lot of my friends came up to me and goes, okay, Christian, where's your Doctor Who panel? I'm like, nope. <laughs> Is there any Doctor Who panels? Nope. <laughs> They go, what are you doing here? I'm having a good time, actually, for once. Collecting <laughs> photos with a traveling TARDIS. And exactly, doing and there the are a ton of them. There are quite a few of them. Um, one of the photos I enjoyed getting was uh, Nick Frost. Santa! Why <laughs> Santa? <laughs> He's Santa! got a lot of tattoos. I'm in a lot of tattoos. I saw the photo um, that you posted of him with with the with the traveling TARDIS, and I was kind of amazed, like how many the ta- how, how how many tats he has, but also his for his affinity of the the coin rings. Where it's like he had the three rings that looked yeah. like the, the centerpieces of a, of a coin. And yeah. I was kind of like looking, I'm like, oh, the, that's pretty cool. And then I'm looking more going, that looks really heavy. Well, he was showing all the, uh, the the promos that he had. And I didn't know he's into the series. He's in the series Into the Badlands. I didn't know he yes. was in there. Yes. I did not know that. 
one oh my god i'm gonna sound like such a bad fan one of those nights i think i left uh walking dead on and just kept the tv just going and then it ended the bad ones came on and just uh, got into the kitchen did dishes that kind of thing and all of a sudden i heard nick frost's voice i'm like wait what Santa. And it was some, it was Santa. And I was thinking, um, well, I, I remember him from space. So I was thinking, Ed, um, not Ed. Wait, was he Ed in that? And in Shaun of the Dead? Wait a minute. Oh, my brain's like trying to think and it's not working. Hashtag con hangover. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I saw him in, uh, Stole in it for me. and he had more of an action kind of thing because he was actually fighting and stuff too. So it was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, well, I got a pictures of, uh, Nick Frost, um, uh, Commander Riker. Um, mm-hmm. See, I told you. <laughs> I saw uh, uh, Barry Boswick too, right? Barry Boswick, yeah. I said I was going to do this, and I was. It's like I saw him. It's like, I, I, should I do this for Barry? It's like he's not a movie, and but like, I, I meant I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very weird, and it, it was just something that he came up. And not only that, but it was his idea to put his underwear on the camera. So I'm like, <laughs> he's wrapping his that? underwear. <laughs> Around that my was, TARDIS. <laughs> and that was one thing I was trying to figure out. I'm like, okay, am I am I missing something? What what's with the underwear? And I'm trying to in my brain go, was Damn it, it Janet? Don't you know, Brad, where's underwear in uh Rocky Horror? That's what I was trying to remember in Rocky Horror. My brain wasn't working. He was selling signed underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And it was like, I'll take uh, I'll take one. <laughs> cash or card. card can i get a it's autograph yeah why not I like you're gonna wear it anywhere I have, stranger, I have stranger things autographed hanging around my house oh and chef Berman has at some point had to have signed underwear oh god yes there was a, a youtube video of him at ooh megacon orlando and he was uh signing a lady's uh derriere shall we say and so that, because I think it was the thing is she wanted the sign and he wanted a tattoo or she wanted to get it tattooed, but the daughter was saying, no, you can't have a tattoo. And he was like, well, if I sign it here, no one knows if you have it tattooed or not. And she, she had it signed. Cause I remember it, was crazy. it might have been like an Instagram story kind of thing. It was, it was, it was video and it was hilarious. And I remember at one point he was like, David, David, look. Cause Tenet was right like at the one next to him across the aisle. And he's just like looked and then just did this lean back of, wait a minute. He goes, what? <laughs> like, welcome, welcome, to the, welcome to the con life. What else did you see and do at Supercon? Because I've, I've never been. I've never been to Supercon. And I believe they just got sold or bought by Repop. Yeah, Repop owns them now. And uh, it, it, was, it was just fun. I, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be comparative and like say, I, I don't want to make it sound like a, a downer or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it, they had just like, the other big conventions of like MegaCon where they had, you, you know, if you had your Star Trek and, and such, you, uh, well, Doctor Who, I have no idea why Doctor Who is not there, but, um, they had, they had Star Trek, they had Star Wars, they had, they had things to do. They had the merchandise, uh, vendors out there. Um, do you think it's just, just, you know, in general changes afoot? That's, I mean, that's what happens with every convention. I mean, even MegaCon had that when, uh, Informa bought them. So there's going to be little changes between, you know, from here to there. And sometimes change is good. Sometimes it's eh, not, not, not so good, but it gets I, better. I, I, I'm hoping, this is my hope. And this is, if anybody by some chance from Mega, uh, from SuperCon's listening, I do think, it, I, I think they should move into where they're moving into using more of the community in the area. Mm-hmm. Using more of the locals out there, and um, I didn't. I didn't get that impression because I do feel. I think they already had their own team, their own staff of people that were down there doing their thing, and that's not a bad thing. But I think you get more of an impression when you start using people who are there already. Mm-hmm. There were two cosplayers I met over there, lovely girls, and I forgot their cosplay names. I think it was Larissa Page, and I got to look up the other one. Um, she had a weird name, but they were from Utah. Oh really? And I had no, I I, I absolutely had no problem. They were very nice, very sweet. I do have pictures of them, but I was like, uh, I I know 50 cosplayers on my speed dial phone (laughs) that would have been here in a heartbeat. You know, they're local to the area and I would have brought something in. So it, 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 it it felt like I was at some, it felt like I was at somebody else's house who did rearranged the furniture. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, or, or I was in my house, but somebody said, you know, you're renting your own place. I'm like, what? <laughs> so was I mean, it a different location this year? Cause I uh, was it in Fort Lauderdale and then went to Miami or something. Yeah. When, when, when it was under the old, uh, owner, they went back when it was under Mike Broder, went back between Fort Lauderdale and Miami Beach Convention Center. I personally wanted to go back to Fort Lauderdale because mm-hmm. it's the less of a cluster. Uh, nothing against Miami. 
I hate driving downtown Miami to save yeah. my life. In fact, I would have to save my life to drive around or walk around downtown Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it was just crazy. I mean, just getting out of there took me like 10 minutes. Well, at least on the, at least on the, on the highway, at least you have all the, the big painted medallions of which, you know, if you're going to, if you're going on to 95 or, or, yeah. or you're headed, at least that kind of helps. But when you're traveling, you know, 70 miles an hour, you're like, is that my ex? Okay. Well, we're going to head this way now. Oh, uh, uh, don't tell a particular person in my family, but I did get to a point where, you know what? I'll just wait until the next service center to gas up and it was literally out of a movie where I'm watching the needle go right into the <gasps> E <laughs> and it goes nine miles to next service station. I'm like, no, no! that's when you go ahead and you lean over at the dash at the console and you kind of click the button until if you have a car that does this, that tells you how many miles estimated you have left. Exactly. Okay, then the math starts. Or you do something stupid. Like you, you turn off the AC because for some reason, it's yes, just... <laughs> Mythbusters proved that you can turn the AC off and open up the windows and, You'll get like maybe. Half, it's like when the Starship battle. Enterprise. Yeah, it's like when Starship Enterprise goes in the battle and and they're damaged and they go like, cut down everything but life support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything off now. No life support. No nothing else. So. Oh God. Speaking oh, of life support, we got to pay some bills, don't we? Yes, we do. Dead on. So we're gonna hurry up and uh, let a commercial break uh, occur, and then on the other end, we will kind of keep chit chatting about cons and everything that makes them tick. Are you looking for a used car? Check out the Public Auto Auction app from CarAuctionNetworks.com. You can download the app on your phone or tablet and use it for free, and there's no registration required. You can see what's for sale at car auctions, such as bank repos, dealer trade-in, surplus government vehicles, or impounds. There are plenty of cheap used cars and trucks listed in the app. You can save a lot of money with the Public Auto Auction app. You can also see and bid at car auctions online. Get the Public Auto Auction app for iOS at the Apple Store. Or on Google Play. Or simply go to CarAuctionNetwork.com. That's CarAuctionNetwork.com. And we are back on the other side of the commercial break. You are listening to The Legend of the Traveling Tardist. I am your one, part one of three hosts, Melanie Dean. My second host is Christian Basil. And my third host is author Mackenzie Floor. We're talking cons and just being very relaxed about it. Um, so, Mackenzie, what was the last con that you had gone to and experiences, good, bad, other, or at least yeah. better yet? Which ones have you gone that had a Doctor Who actor in it? Yeah, actually, my last one did, which was awesome because I haven't gone to one where there was an actor at the same time as when I had the Red Wands out. And this time, it actually, we had David Tennant at Motor City Comic Con. And I find it very interesting because I've always, Michigan is an area where you'll hear a lot of things about, well, they're really poor. You know, you have the, you have the issue with the Flint Lawner. So it can kind of sound like it'd be unappealing. But Motor City is actually a convention that brings in a lot of people. I was told by a security guard that I befriended that they actually had in like 70,000 people that came in. And multiple times during that weekend, it was you would be circled around the building, like three people at a time, and they'd be circled around both on Saturday and Sunday. And Tenet was only there on Sunday. So that was pretty incredible. Yeah. I, for me... Yeah, I always wanted Wizard World to come actually out to Michigan, but they actually told me, they go, oh, you know, Michigan has no money. We, we're never going to come out to Michigan. So if somebody from Wizard World is listening, 70000 just for yeah. a tenant, folks. That was that's the, and that's the thing is yeah. with, with Wizard World is they, they, they tend to be a more expensive convention. Uh, personally, I have not traveled to one. I know people who love them. I know people who don't like not not as much um, because they'll have the VIP experiences and the tickets that sometimes other cons won't have. So if you if you want to spend six to eight hundred dollars and you have that full VIP photo, autograph, meet and greet, everything, everything you want, VIP front of the line, fast pass, that kind of thing, then yeah, why not? If you got the if you got the money for it, go for it. Whatever makes you happy. Go for it. Have any um, of you two yeah. do, did VIP before? Have you two yes. either one of them? Yes. yes. I have not. I was yeah, it worth it? Was it worth VIP at that convention? I mean, what, what was the exchange? For Wizard World Chicago, I've gone, say, I did one year where I was general mission, and then the other was, which was for Matt Smith, was the very first time I ever went to Wizard World, and that was just kind of like on a fluke thing because it turned out that my spouse was having surgery because – uh well we 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 take care of cats and kittens at that time in a rescue group and it ended up that uh, my spouse tripped over one of the cages and ended up having to get a total shoulder replacement so yeah that oh. was, yeah so uh, I was on Facebook and we hadn't met a doctor before so I'm like 
and we always wanted to. We were on a bucket list, you know, and this was before, like, Doctor Who became real big at the conventions over on this end. Yeah. So this was, like, the very first time that at least I believe that Matt had been out in Chicago. I'm like, yeah. oh, let, let's go meet a doctor. And I, I mean, I wasn't even a fan of him. I wasn't. I was just like, oh, let's go meet a doctor. This would be cool. So I'm like, hey, you want to go meet a doctor for one day? We'll drive down to Chicago and back one day. You want to do it? Like, yeah. So I did general mission for that day. But then afterward, I had gone back the previous following two years, and I did VIP. And, yes, based on what guests they've had, it definitely is worth it. This year, yeah, it's kind of up in the air because their, their AAA lineup isn't as strong as it has been in the past. Mm-hmm. So this year you might be able to get through without having to necessarily get a VIP. But the previous years, like when they had Back to the Future, they had uh, Christopher Lloyd, they had uh, Leslie Thompson and Michael J. Fox. It was the first time he had ever done a convention most recently from coming to the conventions. Mm -hmm. So I had a VIP for them. I did the the X-Files. They had majority of the cast for the X-Files. And that was a big one because they overbooked David Duchovny really badly. So there were people who did not even get autographs and they paid for them. And they weren't even able to because they they overbooked him way too much. And that's one thing I want to really point out, like, because we were talking before the show is we wanted to make sure you kind of drill in. Overbooking is one of those things that if you're not familiar going to a convention, a lot of times they are not going to cap the VIPs. They don't cap the autographs. So you can actually you could potentially be in a line an entire convention waiting for your single autograph which is detrimental for me or even in this, uh, for Mackenzie. When you're working a convention, you're sitting there kind of waiting for people to kind of, you want to engage your fans, you want to engage, engage, let's face it, potential buyers or potential customers, but they're stuck in a line waiting for that autograph that they've already paid $200 for. So right. how yeah. badly was it for overbooking for, for the one that you were at, that you were just talking about? For, and now we're talking about Chicago. That one was mm-hmm. bad. That was really bad that year for overbooking for, for David to company. I do recall that, I think he was only there for one day, so that didn't help oh. either. And a lot of times when they do bring in actors, especially like for Doctor Who, David Tennant and Matt Smith, though David tends now to be – he tends to go for more than one day. But a lot of times if they do like Wizard World Chicago or Philadelphia, they're only there for one day. Mm-hmm. So I know that – and I can't speak for Showmasters because I've never done any UK conventions, but I know that there's one that Matt's going to be doing in December. And they already had filled up his first photo op, so they – just opened another one. I'm like, oh, you're overbooking. Oh, please mm-hmm. don't tell me you're going to overbook him. Please don't. Because there is, he's one of those actors that he will engage with you. But if you overbook him, David yeah. Duchovny was at one point, he was just going, sign, sign. So he couldn't even go, hello. They were like, they would yell at him if he even said hello to anybody. So they're like, mm-hmm. well, that was rude. I paid $300 or whatever for this right? ticket. And all I get is a, a, a picture with a sign. I don't even get a hello from him. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that that's happened. Yeah, where and that's is, where yeah, that's where like sometimes the VIP works out for you, but because if it's somebody, it, it's it's this weird little metric game you got to put in your head of okay, if it's somebody who never ever does conventions, and they're doing a VIP and they're not capping a VIP, that VIP line might actually be overbooked. So you have to kind of think about. It's funny that you have to kind of make that mental game of if there's anything else I want to do at this convention. Make sure you do that particular signing, that autograph, that photo op, everything, anything that you want to do first and foremost, because otherwise, I mean, there was times where I remember some of my friends, they went to, oh, it was, it was a wizard. I want to say it was a wizard world, New Orleans, perhaps. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, then it was tenant. And at one point I remember that they were telling me, they were telling me this, that the girl, my friend had gone, she had met, a, she had met a girl while we were there and they kind of became, that's the greatest thing about conventions, by the way. You end up meeting people and next thing you know, you're like lifelong friends. Nice. Um, they're at the panel that she had the, the, the other girl she had hooked up with, um, friend wise was dressed as the 13th doctor. So she's not exactly inconspicuous in a, in the David Tennant panel. And, but halfway through the panel, they both stood up and David actually called going, Jody, where are you going? And they both looked up and were like, we got to get in line for your photo op. And it's just kind of a it's it's sad to say that's a real thing. Because if they didn't get in line, then it would have been at the very end. They might have had to have been pushed to another time. It it's you really have to when you're going to these conventions. Try, 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 please, please, please. And I know everybody would on, on the, uh, Mackenzie and Christian would agree is you really got to look at the schedules of what they're doing because if you're looking at something going, wait a minute, if their panel is at this time and their photo op is at this time, they're literally going from one place to another. How are you going to be able to do both? You know, so oh, yeah. to really think about that. Well, this yeah. episode is kind of a continuation of what we discuss, and then the, the, the best way to treat a convention is like practically treating a theme park. 
Yes. I mean, you, you get the schedule out, you plan it, you make sure. Now, also, like a theme park, even though you're going to a ride that's only five minutes long, that doesn't mean you're going to be just doing that ride and waiting five minutes to get on the ride. You may be out there for about 90 minutes at mm-hmm. the five minutes. So, and that's the, the worst misconception is that, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about if, it, if it's not clear. If you have a David Tennant panel at four o'clock and there's a photo shoot for David Tennant at three o'clock and a one o'clock, Go get a photo shoot at one o'clock. Don't try to cram at the three o'clock or, 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 or not only that. Okay. Um, somebody else, Matt Smith. There's mm-hmm. two photo shoots for Matt Smith. One, at one, one at three. And there's a David Tennant at four. If you want to catch the panel, get, make sure that you spread it out. Mm-hmm. Don't try to cluster them up together. That's, I've been in line so many times where they've said, uh, you know, be here 10 minutes early. So you go to the one o'clock photo shoot and what happens? You're still waiting. You're still waiting. Yeah. You're still waiting a good maybe 10, 20 minutes and usually about 30 minutes. Now, as you are waiting in line, you're progressively getting closer to that panel time for David Tennant. And there have been a couple of times where I booked him up too closely. There's a two o'clock panel and a one o'clock photo shoot. And I missed it by a half hour because it took the celebrity something else. You don't mm-hmm. want to put everything close together. Yeah. And uh, you want to try to spread it out as much as you can. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's yes. one advice I would give. The yeah. other, the others, as much as you're going to try to prepare, as much as you're going to fly out to a con to meet a, one actor, don't do it for one actor. Yeah. A yes. lot of them, especially the new who crowd, Tenant, mm-hmm. Matt, um, Capaldi even, a lot of them are still working actors. They're still going on gigs. And at any time they could be told, Hey, need you, you know, even though you might've booked this three, four months ahead of time. Oh, sweet. I landed again, a Netflix gig. They got to go. They got to go work. Mm-hmm. They got to go work. So they're not, so there are cancellation. Cancellations are a very, very, very real thing. So if you're going to be planning on going to these, make sure that if you, if you already booked your hotel and you've booked your, uh, flight, your flight, you're not going just for a single actor that you know could tangibly get a gig and might not be there. A lot of the Walking Dead guys were like that. Because the, the theme park analogy. If you're going to the Magic Kingdom ride Space Mountain and it breaks down for the day, you've got something yeah. else. You need to do something else during that day. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. And especially when it comes to cancellations, I have some very good stories from Wizard World Chicago where this has happened. Even to <gasps> give me, me, give me, give me. Yeah. Give me your best one. Oh, my best one would be Arthur and Billy Piper, we were in line, and we go, we're in line the day of for the picture. They both canceled. <gasps> so we paid our ticket. Oh, my God. Home. We're standing in the line. No, they've lined everybody up. The con has absolutely no idea that they're about to cancel. And then we're told, oh, yeah, they uh, they canceled. They both canceled. So that's going with your whole thing about make sure that you don't go there for just one person because – that kind of stuff will happen. I have to use also make sure you always have a backup plan and maybe even have a backup of a backup because absolutely. Sorry, Matt, I love you, but every time he comes over to the United States, <laughs> he has a plane issue. So, <laughs> and I joke about that all the time because it's gotten so bad that last time I went to Wizard World, it was Wizard World Cleveland. The person that checked me in, they go, "Oh, we're so glad that you came today because guess what happened to Matt yesterday?" And they just they just start talk blabbing, telling me his whole history yeah. from the day before, and I'm like. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, and, and one, th- one thing to note is if the person that you're going to be going to see at a convention, any guest again, crew, actor, whatever, if they have a social media account and they're active on it, follow them, keep an eye on them. Maybe this is the time where if you're going to a convention, set up the notifications to ping you. Um, that is something that I tend to do a lot at, um, or not just, not if, um, not specifically just, you know, actors, that kind of thing, but any of, any of those kind of panel interests for a convention, uh, for San Diego Comic Con. Um, a lot of the times when I go, I make sure that if it's a specific feed that I'm following or if it's going to be a panel I want to see, um, I love Titan Comics. I read a lot of the Doctor Who ones from them. Um, sometimes in, in, in ones that they used to have and have tapered off. But anyway, um, that should be another show, Christian. Let's just talk. Talk about talking comics because <laughs> yeah. um, I can go off on all of them. Um, but that was one of the very comics. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very active on their social media. So that was one um, for Twitter, especially. Twitter's a good one to have that ping to you to have your notifications done so that you knew what time panels were or what time they're going to be going this thing or that. Or, hey, we're going to have a signing at such and such at our booth. 
that's a lot of the ones that you want to follow too. If there's a specific booth that you know that a company's going to be at, again, this is going to be like the bigger kind of conventions. Um, make sure you're following them on, on their social media account, media accounts, because that could be also your extra signings. That could be your bless his soul. Uh, at one point, um, this was a couple of years ago, or this is when Capaldi was still, you know, still doctoring it up. He had actually gone from, I think from one thing to another, but then he ended up being down by Hall H the line for Hall H outside. So if you're just following other people's like the hashtags and everything on Twitter, it's like Hall H line there. People are just saying, Oh my God, Capaldi's here. Like, wait, what? And I kind of look over. I'm like, Oh, I'm not that far from it. Run. So, you you know, let social media kind of help be your barometer of where you should be. So that's a very, very, also if like in the case of at Megacon, um, when John Barman had his uh, suitcase lost. So we all got to wonder what he was going to be wearing. I hadn't heard that story. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was on his, it was this past Megacon. Apparently, uh, American Airlines had lost his luggage. They sent him that little nice little notification saying, your bag is... Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it became like the talk of Artist Alley where we're all showing each other's phones like, look, because we knew John's going to be there. So you set your notifications for letting me know everything. And he had posted that saying, yo, great. And what am I going to be wearing to the con? And um, one of our panelists that come on, Sarah, she had even like messaged back on Instagram kind of telling him, Hey, if you want to borrow an apron, Hey, you know, I'm right here at, you know, artist alley, blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately his bag did come. Uh, so he, he wore what he wanted to wear. He had a, I believe it was the blue TARDIS suit was one of the, the outfits was in that bag, but that kind of caused a little stir of, Oh Lord, he's going to come out commando. Who, who knows, who knows what he's going to be. Doing. <laughs> um, but that was, uh, but I, if I remember correctly, Megacon Orlando, that was the one where Tenet was first on Saturday, uh-huh. and then on Sunday he went up to Motor City, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that, that's right, he did. And that's funny, too. About, I have two stories, one about Byron and actually one about American Airlines. So with, starting with American Airlines, I did the literary classics uh, back in May, which was, I think it's maybe it's even the same weekend as Megacon was, where I went there and I won an award for the right of wands. And Matt Smith also, yeah, Matt Smith won, yeah. won one as well. Well, I asked him, I'm like, can you ship the medal back to me? Because I just have, I got, I just got a funny feeling about this. And they're like, yeah, 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 no problem. We'll, we'll ship it to you. So I take my medal with me on a little hand baggage and all my regular suitcases, of course, is with American mm-hmm. Airlines. I get to the airport. They left my suitcase in oh. Chicago. Oh. Uh, they're like, yeah, it, it's still sitting in the airport in Chicago. Oh I'm gosh. like, so I'm like, okay. They go, so we're going to mail it to There's another flight that's leaving tonight at 8 o'clock. We'll get your luggage on there, and then we'll have somebody actually drive it to your house. So I'm thinking, oh, okay. thank God, I did not put my medal on there. And thank yeah. God I didn't have mats in there because I'm thinking – who the heck, where the heck would, did, you know, my, my luggage goes to Gallifrey, I guess. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't lost. I'm glad that they <laughs> at least knew from their scanning system where it was. I mean, still not a, oh, uh, guys, where's, where's my stuff? Where it? Uh. Oh, good Lord. Well, that's funny. And there was oh, also one. I'm going to pause you real quick because I just looked at the time and we need to do another quick commercial break on the end, on the other side of it. We're going to go come back and Mackenzie's going to start and finish her Barrowman story. So stay tuned. Barrowman. <laughs> Change your life with Ray K Distance Energy from Energy Right Now. What is Ray K? Well, Ray K Distance Energy is positive energy transferred over distance by Ray K Energy practitioners to help you heal and live your best life. How will Ray K help me? Ray K Energy transfers can help increase your income, better your health, help you lose weight, even stop smoking. It can be used to buy or sell real estate, even find lost items. Wow, Ray K Energy seems pretty powerful. It is, and you can start calling on Ray K Energy today. Just reach out to practitioner Leah Schiller online at energyrightnow.wordpress.com. Leah Schiller, where can I find her online again? Unlock your potential today with Energy Right Now at energyrightnow.wordpress.com. And we are back, uh, and I'm not even going to say who we are. You already know who you're listening to. And Mackenzie, <laughs> let's go with our barman story. What about poor people who are just flipping channels through iHeart or iTunes? <laughs> <laughs> just, who are these bozos? <laughs> so what about traveling tourists? She's going to start talking, and I'm going to eat a hobnob. We're extremely professional here, and uh, I'll go on mute so I can go ahead and meet this. Take away, Mackenzie. So with John Berman, we're talking about Omegacon, where his luggage gets lost. We had an incident where he was supposed to come to Wizard World Chicago, and I think this was Wizard World 2016. He accidentally overslept and missed his flight. So he posts on social media going what Melanie says. He puts this video on. He's like, I am so sorry I overslept. I'm coming to the convention. I'm going to be there at this such and such time. And he, he did show up really late that night. 
And he stayed till 11 o'clock, I believe it was, that same evening, just signing autographs, get everybody in, because he felt so bad that he had overslept. He <laughs> was just like, oh, poor guy. Uh, so that, that when you talk about things happening when either someone oversleeps or they have plane trouble, even myself going to Gallifrey One is poking fun about Matt with the, the flight trouble. Same thing happened to me going to Gallifrey One this year. I had plane trouble, too, and I ended up showing up three hours later than I was supposed to be there. I'm like, okay, I can't. I'm going to put my foot in my mouth now when it comes to airline flight travel. <laughs> well, Luckily, I haven't had that problem yet. Anyway. <laughs> Luckily, I have not. Knock on wood. But, you know, San Diego's the coming. Ah! So, Christian, any yeah. uh, any stories of um, wait, wait meeting minute. people or any other... Are you gonna take the traveling TARDIS to San Diego? Yes. Okay. Was, as far as I as far as I recall, I think you were gonna hand it off to Nisha because your yes, yes. proximity is a little closer than 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 me to someone on the other side of the coast. Um, you but yeah, to hear let's... first, folks. We're sending the traveling. I, 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 when is when is San Diego? Hold on. I want to make sure I, I didn't. To, I wanted to mute. I'm going to tell people people I'm sending the traveling TARDIS that way, and guess yeah. what? There's a yeah, con so going on over here. So that I San, San Diego Comic Con is July 17th. Begins as the Wednesday um, till the 21st. Oh Lord, hold on, 17, 18, 19. Yes, I'm counting with my fingers. 2021. Okay, till the 21st. Um, so there's five glorious days where the traveling TARDIS is going to be running around. Um, I will have it as well as Nisha, Nisha Mulchen. Uh, she's going to have it. I'm going to have it. She's going to have a panel. So quick plug for her. I don't have the information right now, but we can probably plug it at some other point because I think we'll have another episode beforehand um, with the diversity geek. She's going to be having a panel. Um, definitely go check her panel out, though. I'll go online and you know do all the fun um, research like we've been saying, research, research, research. But we'll definitely be having the, the traveling chart is going around. If you want to follow either myself or diversity geeks, social medias, we'll probably be po- um, posting a little bit here and there. So if you ever want to meet up and see the traveling TARDIS, get a photo with it and we'll post it to our own social media. You can meet the traveling TARDIS in all its glory. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. Mackenzie has seen it. I did. I took it Again, to New York City. What was Wait, it like I, when you? What was it like when you first saw him? When he first showed up in the box? When he first showed up in the box, I had my FedEx hat, head on, and I'm like, "Oh my God, how did this get here? Is it in one piece? I hope it's in one piece." <laughs> yeah, she's scolding me for the way I shipped it over there. <laughs> what did you she's, like? She's like oh, how did you? Her? No, he I just had. had it, what did you do? He just had it in an ordinary box and nothing really special about it. But the thing was, is a lot of people don't know with FedEx, it doesn't matter if it's going air or ground. It has to go through the state conveyor belts. And there want, there's a conveyor belt that has a six foot drop. And if and they don't put the packages on by size, they'll just put them on by any size. So let's say his little box is there and a big box comes down below and shoves and hits it right at the angle. Well, if that happens, his box and everybody else's box has been destroyed, and so has the bigger pair of belt has been destroyed too. Oh my okay. goodness! Yeah, they, their their conveyor belts are very sensitive. So that was one of my jobs when I worked for FedEx, the shipping department. I actually did a lot of what they called pack and ship because mm-hmm. we'd get so many people who would come with like an ordinary like a box with gift wrap for Christmas. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you can't ship no, you it. can't do that that way. Yeah. Or paper, or just yeah. like a paper. Brown paper. I'm like, no, you can't ship it that way. And people didn't even realize that, especially if something is over a certain amount of value by FedEx's rules, you they have to actually inspect it to make sure that it, it is properly shipped. Otherwise, if let's say your item is five hundred dollars and you put a claim in it because well, you didn't take their advice and the product got destroyed. It doesn't go on FedEx. It goes on you. So they're really yeah. particular about that type of thing. So and yeah, yeah. When, I got, when I got the little turnus, I'm like, um, I'm going to ship it back to you and I'm going to repackage it the way FedEx would package it. And mm-hmm. you're welcome. <laughs> and that's that's actually kind of a good quick little footnote point is um, I know San Diego. I know the bigger convention centers. They all have either a package ship, whether it be FedEx or U, uh, UPS. Whereas I know with um, San Diego Comic Con, their convention center has, I believe, two uh, FedExes within it. And one of them, it gets at, I am slash was slash will always be a fan of the TV show Psych. And I had at one point one ace, one of the big skateboards, so a longboard. And it was of the, the, the Psych character Sean and Gus on it. And I at one point took it down there and got it autographed. So one 
another uh show we should just do is just talk about autographs and autograph seeking in the correct way and the polite way and the the respectful way of asking for an autograph footnote um for another show but that was something that once i had gotten all those autographs done on it i took it right to that that fedex pack and ship and i had them pack it up and they shipped it to me you know ship it home so that's also a really good little note to to for yourself where in case you don't want to risk the bag getting lost, in case you're not <laughs> sure about how you're going to be able to bring something over, a lot of convention centers do have either a, a FedEx, a UPS within them or something nearby where sometimes it might be better if you got that autograph, you got that photo, you have a lot of con swag. You ended up going to different booths and just bought a ton of artwork, hint, hint, or a lot of books, hint, hint, um, or traveling TARDIS T-shirts, hint, hint. Um, you, can, you know, get <laughs> You could go to one of those facilities and get everything packed up for you that it's going to be nice, safe and sound. And you don't have to worry about it trying to get through um, airport security or baggage fees and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's a little footnote. But, yeah, traveling TARDIS is definitely going to have to uh, go to San Diego. Christian. Will he come back? I'm going to leave him there. He's going to be in uh, Escambardo. He's just going to be mounted somewhere. (laughs) Yes. He'll be in Tijuana. For all. I'll bring my passport, <laughs> head down. Be like, look, he's been to Mexico. Well, oh, what's the that. deepest trench in in the ocean? I forgot what it's called. The, the Mariana. Something. The Mariana right. Trench. We'll find him down there. <laughs> you know what? I think I might. If if I grab him early enough, I will take him to the best taco shop in San Diego, which is Lucha Libre Taco mm-hmm. Shop. If you wear a Lucha mask there, so um, like he's going to enjoy it like I would. I think he would <laughs> love it. I'm going to get him a California style burrito with the French fries inside the burrito, son. And um, I will act like the TARDIS ate it and not pig out. <laughs> um, <laughs> anywho, complete digressing. Welcome to the wide world of this podcast <laughs> where we don't have Today's producers episode. telling us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, well, I'm, I'm going to give a few shout outs. I want to, especially at MegaCon, first of all, I want to thank Patty Hawkins. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Logan Bell, a big fan of the of the radio show. He won the voice of Supercon. I actually, I never, I wasn't even thinking about auditioning. I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, and I auditioned for the voice of Supercon, but definitely if I'm going to lose to somebody on that stage, it was Logan Bell. He, he has a sweet, nice voice and I hope they get to do something with him uh, and his, and his wonderful voice out there. Um, Larissa what was Page. the voice of Supercon? Cause I saw the photo. I saw the photo uh-huh. of you at the podium. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what it was. Tell, tell, yeah, tell me. Tell I, it, it's kind of changed over time. I don't. When it, when it was under the old management, it had a little bit more. But now the voice of Supercon is more of like a bragging rights thing. Okay. <laughs> so it was, but it was nice. I mean, it, it was. We auditioned on a Saturday. They give you like something to read. Um, it was just like one paragraph to read out there, and then they um they would say, okay, now read it again. And if you passed, then you went over to Sunday where the audition took place, where they had real voice act. I wouldn't say real voice act. I don't want to say it in that regard, but they had voice actor professionals come out and critique you, and you had one shot to do it right. Did and, you do uh, it like a Dalek? Now, <laughs> <laughs> why not? Did no, you do because it like they gave me canine. superhero cheese and macaroni. Ah, that's right, folks. If you're interested, Kraft now has cheese and macaroni <laughs> superhero. <laughs> that was my commercial. And I was like, are you seriously giving me this one? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> it was like, oh, God. And I was the first one. I hate being the first one. Oh. That because at least when, when you're like the second or third one in line, you, you, you learn from the first person like, Oh, okay. They screwed up. Let's not do that. <laughs> I yeah, like, I also sets the bar. I don't know. I, I think, you know what? I, maybe you, I think you're right. Maybe if you're going, maybe there's something to said, not being the first person, but being that second or that third person where you're still showing initiative, but you're also learning from the first two, but well, you're also like not having to go It was like, you're up first. I'm like, Oh God. And I was just like, I'd like to be second or third or at least in the back. Because you get it done out of the way first, a little, you know, out of the way already, but you learn like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that when I go up there and do that. <sighs> the good thing about at least when I'm if, uh, during my acting days of uh, doing auditions and at least you're not in a crowd with other people. I kind of liked going first or at least praying that they call me in as early as possible, because what you're going to do in that room in front of the camera, it's it's going to be irrespective of what anybody else is going to do. You're just going to go in, present what you have. This is me. And if they like it, great. If they don't. Eh. Maybe hopefully they can give you points for next time. So I kind of like going, I just want to get back on the road and go home so I could cry because of all the stress. 
Also, I want to give out to J.R. Hibbard, uh, the fourth Doctor cosplayer. You got to check him out. I mean, he's spot on, and he's the sweetest guy out there in the convention circuit. So if you get to see him, I, I, I literally, um, he, uh, Mackenzie, he's spot on fourth Doctor, curly hair and everything, and he's just got such a wonderful personality. I cannot take him anywhere. Seriously, I cannot take him anywhere. We tried to walk from one point of the convention floor to the other. I think we stopped like twenty times. Everybody wanted his picture, and as I was like, at one point, I was like. Uh, Jay, I gotta go, I, I gotta go to this panel. I need to be on time. <laughs> Shameless plug is his Instagram is the dot fourth. That's spelled out F O U R T H dot doctor dot cosplay. So it's yeah. the fourth doctor with a dot in between where there would typically be spaces. Definitely check him out. His, cause he has both, um, the, 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 the brown, what I call like the brown coat and the brown, the, the typical kind of, uh, cosplay the outfit for the fourth doctor but then he's also wearing his his the, the burgundy one and uh, i absolutely adore the burgundy one because it's just one that you don't typically see and i'm also giving um mark robards um mark knight rises a sweet guy uh he was with me and i've got to give a shout out to murder doll ivy um she actually um let me have her uh, let me invade her booth while I was down there, because I didn't have a booth at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no panels, no booth. I was like, I was just, okay, I'm here. So she <laughs> said, well, if you want to put your flyers down there, you want to hang out with me, it's fine. So I got to give those two a, a definite Yay. shout out. Um, they, <laughs> they were totally wonderful down there. And um, believe it or not, you know the picture that I took that got the most attention? You want you want to take a idea shot? And one of my favorites is the Star Wars one, if you get to see it. I, I put it on the, I had originally, I put it up on the uh, banner which mm-hmm. it has Kylo and Ray fighting out over the traveling TARDIS. And that picture just came out just magical. I was going to guess that one. one. I was going to guess when you said, guess which one? I was like, that one. No. Nope. Yeah. It actually was a picture that was not taken at the con. It was en route to the con. No. I'm, not, I'm not going on Instagram right now. I'm looking. Uh, no, it's not on Instagram. It's on Facebook. No, I'm it not was, going on Facebook. I'm like, Facebook. It was the picture of the TARDIS in front of the Yeehaw Junctions. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what when... got the most attention out there. It was just like, yeah. It was like... Uh, the people, the part where we go, yes, yes, Florida, <laughs> we have a road called Yeehaw Junction. Is it a road or a city? <laughs> uh, it's an old city, it's right? It's a, whole it's, city. A, it's a road in a city. It's it, everything. It's, it's, it's every unimaginable, well, no, it's every imaginable thing that you think is the scary part of Florida. Yeehaw going Junction. down the road. It's just miles of trees, and then there's this one place. I'm sure somebody will correct me on this. It literally is one wooden building that is like a hotel, visitor center, gas station, hair care, and tire products thing, and it's all mixed all together, and it looks like it's an abandoned sh- It looks like it's something that was filmed for deliverance. So I mean, it's just really that scary. And then, I, I mean, I, I, we took, I took a chance to take a look at what was around there, and just like when I saw oh, it, I'm like, Good God, get me out of here. No, there is nothing. No, it's nothing. Because I want to say, I think you, yep. I've, I've never, I've just always thought of it as a road because I think my brain's always kind of thought of it as a crossroads yeah. because it's literally the, like the, the corner of, it is a city, but it's where 60 meets, and this is how my brain's always thinking it, it's like crossroad. It's where um, Highway 60 meets the Florida Turnpike. So if you're me coming from Tampa Bay and you need to get down to Miami, you have two routes. Mm -hmm. Um, You can either just go down 75 and then cut across um, Alligator Alley, or you could go across 60, find Yeehaw Junction, and then go down uh, the Turnpike to hit uh, 95. And that's another way to get to Vero Beach, right? Yes. So if you're you're not going to Miami, if I'm going to Miami, I'm going down 75, I'm going down the coast and then cutting across. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I'm going to like Port St. Lucie, I'm going to Jupiter, I'm going to West Palm Beach, it's a little further north. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I, you're, I'm gonna take the turnpike and hello, Yeehaw Junction. But yeah, it's like middle of nowhere kind of thing. That's like pre-interstates, I think. So I'm sorry if anybody listens from Yeehaw Junction and I'm inadvertently trashing you, but I promise I'm not. I don't, know. I don't think there's it is very tiny. Down. It's very I tiny. Really don't. So the only other things I've ever heard about Yeehaw Junction is like traffic updates when you're, you know, over by like Lake Wales or something or frostproof, and sometimes you hear about Yeehaw Junction. It's just so much further over. Oh, good Lord. Well, I just realized we went completely over our last break. So hey. quickly, <laughs> one more break, and then it's going to be a little a little short little snippet from us talking, uh, just chit-chatting and eating hobnobs and other kind of fun stuff. So here we go to a commercial, and we will be right back. 
The Right of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Right of Wands ceremony, Mirda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Mirda is not the only one with secrets. The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor, available on Amazon.com now. The Blood Phoenix Chronicles by author Michael J. Allen. I refuse to let them burn me alive. That one selfish mistake murdered hundreds and cost a fairy queen her throne. Like it or not, heaven created me to protect. I'm out of time. The last water phoenix in Atlanta. The only way I can interrupt the she's plot to steal creation is where it's true death. Failure means the end of everything. Success might just redeem my sins. Get your copy of the newest book in the Blood Phoenix Chronicles by author Michael J. Allen. Available exclusively on Amazon. And we are back, and this is the last commercial break of our very relaxed episode of The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Melanie Dean. I am an artist. Also joining me is Christian Basil. He is a host and podcaster extraordinaire and amazing author of the Ride of Wands series. Mackenzie Floor is joining us as well. See, that was a much better coming coming back from commercial than the last one where I just said, wing it! Um... We are chit-chatting again uh, about just conventions in general. Um, we're in the thick of our summer con season. Christian just came back from Supercon. I'm preparing for San Diego Comic Con. Uh, Mackenzie's just been traveling like the globe, you know, she's <laughs> booked, so she's in the middle of just her con season. Okay. Um, so we're just chit-chatting about cons in general, mostly of, of naturally because it's a Doctor Who kind of podcast. We're talking about all the different actors and whatnot and stories that we've seen at the kind of cons. And again, this is kind of like our one point uh, we already had an episode of just the con survival guide which was like we, we all know that we want to do a, a second parter um because this is more of a relaxed kind of deal this is going to be like 1.5 because i think we're just kind of also talk out a little bit more ideas for the next one and just kind of talk have some talking points now for our, even our last kind of break on what kind of things we'll we'll flesh out for con survival guide part two and all that kind of fun stuff actually i have a question for you and this is <laughs> this was actually inspired for a better term by a friend of mine who is, I wouldn't say, I, I don't know her condition, but I would say for a better term, claustrophobic. And when I was walking down on Saturday, I had, we were walking to a booth and then all of a sudden I felt her hand grab my backpack. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I just don't like this. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't like yeah. the traffic of the people. And I, for me, I've always used the, the, uh, I know nobody follows this, but I always use that, that, that the, um, the adage, uh, be polite, move to your right. Meaning that if mm-hmm. you're walking and somebody's coming towards you, you yes. veer right. Mm-hmm. And that oh, seems God. to have gotten me out of at least 90% of the stickler. T- yeah, no, yeah, McKinsey's shaking her head. No, no. I tend to time. dance and I t- kind of meet eyes with the person in front of me. We dance back and forth, back and forth, laugh like, yeah. like idiots, then we finally move around. That's yeah, I, nobody I, I, right. I'm exactly. having to remember that. Move to the right. Ooh. And I just remember, well, that, that was the phrase I've always gone to be polite, move to your right when I'm coming in, in, in towards the direction of somebody. But she was hanging on my book. At one point, I lost her. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. She found me and she goes, no, no, no I'm coming. Somebody had started talking to her. But how, how do you deal with the neuroses of that kind of tra- traffic? I mean, how do you get around that? I'm actually well, writing down anxiety at cons, and that should yeah. be a topic for yeah, that should be, to I deal can, with it, especially with the lines and everything. Yes, and Fan Expo actually would be a perfect one to talk about because they do have that issue on Saturday. I have never seen a con that is so packed that you literally – in well, first off, Fan Expo, if you've never been there before, it, their setup is really odd. So they have two different buildings. <laughs> two different oh. buildings. The all the artist alley is in one building, and then the actors are in a separate building. And oh. in order to get to the actors, you have to go up the elevator, escalator, into the second building with the artist alley, turn around and like a, almost go all the way back there, turn around and then go downstairs to get in the first building. So you're almost doing like a 30-minute walk just to get downstairs to where the autograph line is. It's okay if it's – they're usually – they're four day for Fan Expo Canada. They're usually four days. So it's, mm-hmm. Thursday, Friday is usually pretty good. When it gets to Saturday, though – and this is actually something, too. When it comes to – if there are people that you want to get, if you go to a Comic-Con that has a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get who you can out first. So yes. If, if – potentially, which is probably not going to happen with David or Matt, but if they did show up on a Thursday, 
go to them first yes. and get them first because that will actually help you out. That's that's what I did actually at Fan Expo myself when I gave him a gift a couple of years ago. <laughs> Fun fact: Christopher Eccleston yeah. will be at New York Comic Con. You know, it's October third through sixth, but he's there for Thursday and Friday. So I heavily, heavily, heavily endorse what Mackenzie just said. Thursday and Fridays are usually your dead days. And I'm coming, this, this is coming from me both as an attendee and as somebody who's exhibit, who's selling their art and peddling their wares. Um, Thursday and Friday, there's so many less people. But because, let's face it, you took a vacation day, you happen to have the, 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 the stars aligned and you happen to have that day off for, for whichever job you have, um, there's going to be a lot less people. Saturdays, by far, are always the most packed day in the world if there's any way if you have high anxiety or there's an actor that's not that's on the other days other than uh, other than saturday go down even sunday will be less people especially around the like afternoon part because people will use that as their travel day so if you can plan around that especially if it's a local con go that friday go the sunday if you can but yeah absolutely agree with mckenzie on the the packed and the the, the Go early. And, yeah. and, and especially if they have that availability, because most of the, the top actors are usually going to be on Friday, Saturday. So there's really nothing much you can do about that. But if, they, if you're planning out a day, yeah, all autographs that you can possibly muster or all the photographs do that on the Thursday. Get those in so you don't have to worry about those standing in line. If you're going to do anything on probably Saturday, I would just recommend doing panels because that would uh, unless unless it's with you know tried to work in your actors but just be prepared just to walk in the panels because at least there's usually for the most part plenty of space depending on if it's the first come first serve how popular the panel is and get that away sunday is when you do your shopping because mm-hmm. yes. that's when the deals hit because those vendors are going like oh i didn't sell this all of a sudden they've got two for one specials or discount 10 percent. you know they'll 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 try they're wanting to get rid of their product because i don't want to tell people to, i don't want I you know, people to saw... know that that i don't want to be bringing everything home and packing it up with me but it is true i it will is... put better some sales will happen on sunday because i just don't want to pack it up exactly. it's like here That's... just take it the, you'll be surprised how many people will will work with you on certain things on a Sunday. That's when you want to do your actual shopping, unless there's some kind of limited edition yeah, thing. Yeah, then you want it early because otherwise Big it money. literally might not be there. Exactly. Um, and just uh, be be honest and ask them, hey, do you have many more of these? If it's, I, I've I know all the tricks in the book because I used all the tricks in the book. It's like, hey, do you have a lot of prints of that? And it's a yes, I do. And if I'm to be honest, there's times where I'll tell people, look, I have only. 10 more prints of Sean and Gus because I completely forgot to pack them for the show. So if you want it, get it now. If you want to wait, that's cool too. And then I kind of, you know, pitch from there. Um, but when it comes to anxiety at a con, know that you are surrounded by, I would say, I would say damn near 85 to 90% of those people, if not a hundred, prove me wrong. Um, if get and understand anxiety. So if you, if you could literally have, be having a panic attack and you, if you look at a, uh, you, you lock eyes with a complete stranger they might understand what you're going through and go, do you need help? Let me block for you. Let me help you. Um, I was going to, I'll, I'll quick yeah, interject. Spouse, quickly, I was going to say my spouse had one of those episodes at Wizard World Chicago where we went to see Matt the very first year because in the particular area where they do the photo ops, that convention center actually shakes, the floor shakes. Oh. So, yeah, and we had social con that year too. So the social con's like, boom, 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 boom. boom. And literally, and like, oh, 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 I can't move. I can't, I, I, you know, and I'm just like, it's okay. It's okay. Just come over here. The same thing happened. At, uh, we, we did this two doctors event in New York City where uh, they went up to David Tennant, and I just, I pushed my, I pushed them in front of me because they had never met Matt before, and I met Matt. So I'm like, here, you, you go in front. I'll go behind you. That way you can engage with them. And then when they got up to Matt or to David, like, Wanted to say something. It was completely couldn't say anything. And I was like, happy birthday. And, mm-hmm. and my spouse was giving me this dirty look like, how dare you be able to talk? And I can't say where yeah. I'm was. <laughs> and a lot of the actors are going to know that, if you, that do not feel bad that once you get up to somebody and go, that? Hi, you do that Christmas story thing of football. What's a football? Yeah, I want a football. <laughs> you, it will happen, and they're used to I seeing know. that. They're not. No one's going to make fun of you. No one's going to think less of you. Just, oh my God, they're so excited to see me, and they lost. The, they, they lost the power of speech. Eee! They'll feel good about themselves. Yeah. I actually had one where of um, my my booth babe. Uh, she went to go get a photo with Tenant, and it just so happened where the the a girl had which this tickles 
my heart like so much is when people buy artwork and buy just fan things to have signed rather than just the headshots. So this girl had purchased um, a print of mine of, of the 10th Doctor, and she just so happened to be in line in front of the, 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 the my, my friend Leslie, who was helping me run my booth. And she recognized her and said, oh, you're here. You're going to get the, you know, you're going to get this autograph. And the girl turned at her and she goes, do you, um, do you mind, you know, she was talking to her a bit and she, she read that she's getting anxious. And she's like, yeah, can I, is it okay if um, you just stay with me when, when we're in line? And Leslie was like, yeah, I got you, girl. She actually was holding her hand the whole time. And at one point, I think she had let go and the girl grabbed her shirt. But it was a, don't worry, I got you, you'll get up there. So at one point when she started freaking out, she's like, I, I don't know what I'm going to talk. You know, I was probably going to be quiet. And she found out that she actually was a special needs teacher. So mm-hmm. Leslie had said, look, when you go up to there, because it happened to be one of those lines where you could see David was engaging and talking to his fans because there wasn't a gigantic line. Leslie had said, mention to him that you're a teacher. Because I, I remember her saying that she knows like um, he has a soft spot for teachers. And maybe they're in his family, you know, that kind of thing. But it ended up being the thing of if you if you do have that weird thing, talk about something that you love and that you're passionate about because you're not going to shy away from it. And that in, your anxiety won't trigger because that's, that's your safe spot. So she kind of talked about, yeah, I, I teach, you know, this and I try to show Dr. Hulu my classes and it got her going. And that kind of became her safe little thing. So, you know, stick to what you know and what, what you're passionate about it. And they'll, they'll in turn love that too. I was being a exactly. goofy jerk when we saw David Tennant that one time. And I was like, Oh David, we're both on iHeartRadio. Check us out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we both share something together. We're both here. Oh, I, I, do you remember that time? Uh, I, I think it was a couple of years ago. Megacon um, was at the other uh, was, was at the other convention uh, site. I think it was in the. It was that the North, North Tower. North West. Tower. Yeah, the one that's connected to the Rosen Center. Uh, West. 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 Wait, West. Yeah. Yes. It's, that's the great thing about Megacon. It keeps changing. It's either in West or North South. Right. It's either one building or the other. Mackenzie, this was this is funny because when Megacon let out next door at the Rosen Center, which is the hotel connected to it, mm-hmm. they have conventions as well. In this particular mm-hmm. case, it was what two years ago, two or three years yes. ago, it was the pre- yes. presidential Demo- the Libertarian Party was in there. Yes. The guy who was running, you know, the front runner of the Libertarian Party is in there, and here come all of these cosplayers running out, <laughs> going <laughs> down because the only way you can get through the building is you had to walk through the convention area. Yeah. So all of these cosplayers are running down with all these libertarian straights, you know, they're nice wearing their suits and everything. <laughs> and you just think <laughs> something went wrong. <laughs> I love cons. Uh, I had an incident too where and this goes back on the anxiety. I'm not typically somebody who will go up and during the panels will ask the question, but mm-hmm. I had one of these things where I had to know about it was a case where Matt and David were together. So I'm like, I gotta ask about stage because I know they both do stage and i'm like i wonder how much you know do they like that better do they like it as well is a one or the other so i go up there to i decide oh i'm going to do it i'm going to ask a question i'm going to ask about that i go up there and i start speaking to the microphone and i can hear my voice echo back to me and oh like, yeah. turns your brain like, off yeah it was like a deer staring at headlights it was like i could hear it was like almost like it was a god and it was just like boom i'm like i just stood there i'm like what was I asking? <laughs> I completely forgot what I was gonna, what I was asking because I got so distracted by it talking back to me. And I even know that for being a when I used to work in a call center, if I was on a call with somebody and I could hear my voice echo back, I would literally have to hold my head down towards the table because I had to concentrate so hard yeah. to listen to what they're saying and what I'm trying to say. You know what? I'm hearing my voice echo back to me. And it was it was really nice that they both were both could t- I could tell they both were very understanding. They probably thought that I was nervous, and it was like, no, I'm not nervous. It's just that, well, this screwed up. <laughs> so even technical issues can cause anxiety, and it's okay. If you if you have a question, and you're like, I'm so nervous. You know, they're they're completely understandable. Okay, so we've been talking our brains out here, kind of Doctor Who is kind of convention here. I, I guess, Mel, it's time to wrap things up. Yeah. <laughs> For the most yeah. the time we have. Yeah. Well, um, we want to thank everybody for joining us as always. We hope you had a good time listening to this episode. We were trying something a little different here to do something a little loose and free and fun. Uh, if you like this episode, uh, let us know there. Thank you for, again for joining us on iHeart, iTunes, Krypton Radio, Spotify Speaker, Podbean, uh, Podcoin. If you want to make a little money, don't tell them I said that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to... <laughs> I want to thank uh, everybody at Supercon for uh, letting me down here. 
down there in Miami. It was a great time. I just didn't like driving it. Other than that, it was just a, a fun time. I'm hoping we would do it next year. And we, speaking of conventions, we're already in talks with conventions for 2020, and we've landed one convention already, a pretty darn big one. We're happy that they want us back. Uh, we're really excited, so we'll announce it as soon as we get more details. We'll probably let you know in the fall. But, again, we can't do this without you, and we have a, we have a great time not only without the conventions, but um, – Mackenzie will be in Orlando next week. Mackenzie. Yeah, Mackenzie will be in Orlando. Well, we won't hold that against her. So, anyway. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. In Orlando. <laughs> so, if you're in Orlando, buy one of her books. There you go. There you go. Again, thank you all for joining us here at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis Radio Show. My name is Christian Basil, and I'll probably hopefully wake up by next week. Uh, we have artist <laughs> Melanie Dean. Thank you for hosting while I'm trying to recover over con funk or no con yeah con funk no con not con no, never mind no con creds when you're sick you're just hung yeah, over from funk, just exhaustion con depression and whatever hashtag you want to throw out there with the word con yeah. in front of it. Thank you for joining us and continue to listen in and become part of the legend. <laughs>